Yeah, you are given a set of points. Their x and y coordinates, and you want to find some pair of points uh, whose distance is minimum. So I hope you know how to compute distance in two dimensions. Okay. Let's say this point is x i y i. This point is x j y j. Then you square x i minus x j. Square y i minus y j. Add those two. You take the square root. Simple application of Pythagoras theorem. Right. So what is the most trivial? You just uh, compute the distance of each of these pair of points. So how many points? Let's say there are n many points here. So there are n choose too many pairs. So that is a, a big O n square algorithm which you already have. And obviously, you want to do better than this. Big O of n square. So, what is your guess? How much time can we um, solve this problem? Oh, yeah, I can't hear you. Yeah, yeah, go ahead. Yeah, we saw we go in square algorithm. We just compare the distance between each pair and find the mean speed. And uh, yeah, we would like to see a video and now. Okay. So we would like to improve this uh, n square algorithm and keep record of minimum distance. So it works in n square time, but you want better. You want to use some divide and conquer strategy and solve this problem in n minimum. Okay. So any ideas how to do this in n log n time? So by the way, you can assume that the distances can you can compute in constant time. It is not trivial, but uh, let's just assume it for now. Start with respect to x coordinates. Yeah. Binary search. How do you apply binary search here? Mm -hmm. Okay, I sort of get what we are trying to say. So, uh, big O of n square is the trivial algorithm, and 
Let's consider the one dimensional version of closest plane. Okay. So let me assume that all these points they lie on a single line. For instance, you can draw a line passing through these points. Now, how will you solve this problem? You want to better than n square solution. Let's say you have these four points which are lying on a single line. These are the only points, and they might look further down this line, above this line, upwards, and you want to find the closest pair, pair of points with minimum distance. Let's say there are n points on this line. Now, what is the time complex? Sort the graph traversal. What is your graph here? It's a simple idea. Anyway, in what dimension, what is the time you might expect to solve this problem? All these points are lying on a single line and you want to find the closest pair. Pair of points with minimum distance. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, how is that? Yeah, order n log n. Why is that? So as uh, one of you said, we will sort these points according to uh, whichever comes first. Right? Once you sort these points, you can use any any of your favorite methods. Since we are focusing on divided conquer, we will use merge sort or something like that. Okay. And uh, you want the, the pair of points with minimum distance. You notice that now it is of no use to compare every pair of points, right? So you just sort and you check the distance of consecutive points on this line. That is more than 
So you are not going to care about the distance between this point and this point. So there are lots of points in between, so that distance is any less larger. So we want to check only for consecutive pair of points. So there are n many points, so there are n many distances you want to compare. But there is this bottleneck of it that you have to sort all these points in advance and tell you to do it. Okay. So it takes n log in time. Okay. Now the question is whether the same strategy will work for two dimensions. So let's say you have these points here, right? And what happens if you sort these points by x axis and compare the consecutive points? Is that going to work? And sort array of pairs with respect to their distances. Okay. So there are n square many pairs here. So there are n square many distances. But why do you want to sort? We just want the closest pair. No, I am asking you for whether this algorithm will work that we sort with respect to x coordinate. Okay. And uh, yeah, we just check for consecutive pairs, x coordinates. And find that this. No, it won't. Yeah, it won't. So, um, what is the problem again? So, this is the n log n time algorithm, so, and you can't generalize this to two dimensions. So, for instance, here you have so these points are sorted according to their x coordinate. Okay. And you just check for the minimum distance, but it might be possible that this is the closest square. Now the distances are very large. So this obvious strategy is certainly not going to work, and we need to do something. Okay, so let's go back to one dimensional things. Let's say we had this example here. So now I want some divide and conquer solution for this problem. So how are you going to divide them?
what is the problem? So you are given this set of points and find the pair with minimum distance between them. And I want you to find the divide and conquer switch. Yeah. So you divide into two regions, find the closest pair in the two regions, and then you just compare. Okay. That doesn't quite work out uh, because what if uh, two points are on different side of the region and this was our closest? Okay, so what I'm saying is this. Yeah. So you found some divide the point into two sets. Okay. Roughly equal number of points. And let's say this point is the median. So let's say uh, these two points at the median and we take the midpoint of that. Okay. Can you guys hear me? Yes, sir. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. So this is a problematic case uh, that and then traverse the point list. Just a second. You can first sort the points and then traverse the point list, finding distance of the current point with next point. Okay. In the distance list that we get, we can find the minimum distance. Yeah, I'm talking about one dimensional only, but uh, yeah, this is fine, but. Uh, Yeah, this algorithm certainly works and uh, we want to divide and conquer okay. So there was one solution that uh, we divide the set of points into two regions. We find the minimum distance. Let's say this was the minimum distance and this was the minimum distance here. Now, is it necessary that uh, the minimum of these two will be the minimum distance for the entire set of points. 
No, because there are some points with one endpoint in this set and other endpoint in this set. Okay. It is very well possible that the distance between these two points is less than delta one and delta. So we need to check for such cases. Okay. And how do we do, do that? The closest pair is either delta 1, which was the minimum distance in the first set, or delta 2, minimum distance in the second set, or some delta 1, two, where delta 1 is the distance between the point P1 and P2. So, yeah, this was the closest pair in P1, this was the closest pair in P2. And we took the minimum of these two delta 1 and delta 2 and instead delta. And now we want to check for the possibility that uh, there is one point in this set, one point in this set, and whose distance is smaller than delta, which is minimum of delta 1 and delta. So now we use, use some geometric things, which is that where can these points lie? It can be at most at a distance of delta, right? So there is one point here, and if the distance of this point from the median or the center line is itself more than delta then you don't have any hope because any other point to the left of this, that distance is going to be more than delta and so that cannot be the closest thing. Right? And so what do we do now? So we found this strict red lines that we just want to check for points within this interface. So first thing to check is, can there be two points here close by? Or can there be two points in the P2 half? Yes, is that Notice that delta 1 was the minimum distance among all points in P1 and delta 2 was the minimum distance among all points in P2. So if there was some two points which was less than this minimum of delta 1 and delta 2, then this would have been the closest pair. Right? So in either of the sets, we will have a contradiction. So there cannot be two different points uh, within this range. Okay. So that is the problem here. So there is just one point, and which is that one point? Which is the rightmost point of P1, and here it is the leftmost point of P2. Okay. This is the last point in P1, this is the first point in P2. You cannot have points like this because then this distance would be lesser than this. Similarly for P. Okay. 
So now we have an algorithm for the one dimensional case. And uh, how will we output the closest pair? If there is just one point, I give you just one point, then obviously there are no two points, so the problem itself doesn't make sense. So we just pick an infinity. Okay. If there are just two points. We just need to compare the distance between those two points, and that you can do in constant time. Okay. Otherwise, you find the median of uh, these two points. Okay. We saw an algorithm how to do that in linear time in last class. So we don't necessarily have to change the median every time. Sometimes if there are two points, right, which can be uh, closer to the median, you just take the midpoint of those points. Then we divide it P into P1 and P2 with respect to this line here. Right? So this is the partition procedure which we use in that algorithm from last class. Again, it takes linear time. Find the closest pair in the first set, find the closest pair in the second set. These are instances of T of n by 2, T of n by 2. And delta 1, 2 is the minimum distance crossing n. Right? This takes order of n time. And then find the minimum of all of these. So, for all this again takes constant time. And we have this reference, Tn is 2 Tn by 2 plus order of n. So, solve this reference and we are done. So, of n log n and algorithm is problem. Okay, so that is the one dimensional case. And obviously, now we want to move to two dimensions. How will you divide it for a two dimensions? Again, the same idea we will try to use. We have this line L which partitions the points into two sets, P1 and P2. This L is the median score. What is meant by minimum distance crossing L? It is like you have one point in this set, one point in this set, and you want to find the minimum distance between these two points. Okay. So again, the same thing we do, we sort the points by their x-coordinate and find the median. So that we find the line which divides this into almost two equal sets. Okay. So there are just two halves, we find the minimum distance in this set, minimum distance in the second set. And if you take the minimum, not necessary that it will be the closest distance. Again, there is this problem that there could be one point in this set, another point in this set, and the distance is smaller than minimum delta one delta. So that's what I mean by minimum distance crossing L. So now Again, we want to find for how will you find the minimum distance crossing L? And compute the okay. So one idea is for every point P in P1 and for every point Q in P2, we just compute their distances. Okay. So we pick one point from P1, another point from Q to P2, and just blindly compute their distance. 
the roughly equal number of points there are n by two choices here, n by two choices here. So it's n square by four or roughly o of n square. Okay. And keep track of the compute the distances, keep track of the minimum one. And these are all constant time operations. Right. Is this correct? Of course it is. Because you have picked the minimum distance in T1, minimum distance in T2, and you will pick the minimum distance going across the line L. And we took the minimum of all these, and obviously these are the good words. What is the running time? So we have how much? Tn is 2tn by 2 plus we go of n square. Right? Because we took every possible point in the set T1, every possible point in set T2, and there are roughly n squared by 4 min points. And you solve this recurrence, right? and you'll see that Tn is equal to n square. So in two dimensions, you don't know anything better than n square till now. Uh, yeah, so you want to improve somehow. So just this uh, blind strategy of comparing every point in sorry, yeah, P1 and every point in P2, this is bad. Right. So then what else? So we want to minimize the number of comparisons. Do we really need to make these order big O of n square mini comparisons? With respect to the pivot point. Can you partition the points with respect to the distance of pivot point? Um, okay, you can do that. But still, it is possible that there are many points which are close by. Let's say I tell you n by 4 points are close by and it is less than this delta 1 and delta 2. Right? So you need, still need to compare all these points. We go up and square.
So now you need to use something about the geometry of these points, okay? In order to minimize the number of components. So we need to examine all pairs. So you need to just look at some specific pairs. And that's the main challenge. How are you going to reduce the number of comparisons from big of n squared to slightly lesser? Ideally, we would want big of n, but it is not so obvious to see how we can do that. Okay. So where should P and P lie in order to be the closest square? Okay. So we are talking about across. So let's say one point is in P1, another point is P2. So where should they lie? What is the distance between uh, median or this line? So one thing is here that let's say delta one was the minimum distance here, delta two was the minimum distance here, and you take delta to be minimum of delta one, delta. So the same thing as we did in the one dimensional case. We just need to consider points at a distance of delta from this dividing line, right? Because any point outside this, its distance from the line is more than delta. Therefore, its distance from any point in this set will also be more than it. So, we we'll just discard these points. We don't need them. Similarly, we discard all these points for exactly the same reason. Okay. So, we are just interested in this particular section. Okay. But again, the problem is that uh, there could be many points inside this. So we have to discard some more points inside this section. We don't want big of n square min points. Okay. And so ideally what we want is for each point, I just want to compare it with constant other points. Okay, some constant. So this is the distance of delta, this is the distance of delta, and I don't want to compare this with every other point in this set. I just want to pick constant many points and compare it and compare it this way. So obviously we are just looking at x coordinate. Now it's time to look at y coordinate. Okay. So let me assume that the, this point and this point, these are the closest pair. Okay, this distance is less than delta. So what can you say about the difference between their x or y coordinates? It is obviously less than delta, right? So, uh, simple application of Pythagoras. Guessing approach to solve this problem, but instead suppose we create a circle at some point of particular radius. Okay. And you can check the density of points inside that circle. Yeah, it's an interesting idea. So, yeah, you create a circle at some point of particular radius. So, what radius? Delta. Right? Yeah, we can think about this. Very interesting idea. So, but 
sector. What I ideally want is inside this circle, there are only constant many points I want to come to. How are we going to prove that? So, I don't see how this idea can be better than n square time equilibrium. How are we going to do this in n log n time? That's the main issue. Yeah, maybe it works. I don't know. But we want to make sure that the algorithm runs in end long. Okay. So what do we know about this closest pair? The difference between the y coordinate should be less than delta. And the difference between the x coordinate that should also be less than delta. Right, so you sort these points according to their y coordinate. Okay. So let's P one and select all points inside this strip. Okay, so this is the strip I'm talking about. Let's call this PS1, call this PS2. I was P2 and select all points inside the strip. For each point P in PS1 and for each point Q in PS2, we compute their distances and keep track of the mean. Okay, so this was the thing we saw. So it still takes big of n square. And we want to reduce the number of comparisons to big O of n. Okay. And uh, what is the kind of idea is that we are just interested in this strip of length delta. So this length is delta, this length is delta. So we will further divide it into squares. Okay. So this is like a grid, okay, such that uh, length is delta by 2, this length is also delta by 2, this length is delta by 2, okay. Now what is the maximum distance between two points inside this square? Right. First of all, we need to check whether there can be two points inside any of these points. Yeah, delta by root. It's just Pythagoras theorem. You apply what is the farthest it can have. This point and this point. Yeah. So delta by root 2, that is very good because it's less than delta. So that is bad for us because you cannot have two points inside this square loop. Right, because we said that the minimum distance um, among points in S2 and this is inside S2 that should that is at least delta. This delta by root 2 is great enough. Okay, and so there can be only one point inside this square inside each of these squares. Okay. Uh, 
and this point we have here q correct now each of these squares has only one point for the exact resonance because otherwise the distance between them will be smaller than the minimum distance in either of these squares. And we also know that the y coordinate that shouldn't take, exceed delta. Okay. So which points can I look at? How many candidates are there? So if I want to see the closest thing, right? Just have to with the constant neighboring squares. Yeah, exactly. And that's the idea. So each point you would just want to compare with the constant neighboring squares, and that's the algorithm. Right? So you just make constant number of points uh, and check their distances and you'll get big O of n many comparisons instead of big O of n squared. Okay, that's good. So and compare this, right? Right, so hopefully the algorithm is clear what we are trying to do. Yeah, so I'll stop here. If there are any questions, comments, So we have a big O and okay, dynamic. Instead of a big O n square, we'll have big O of n here and big O of n. Hello, sir. Yes. Recently, I shared in chat. Uh, can we work on that logic means by circling the uh, two can center and then circle and check density for points? Can we get better result and analog? And what do you think? I can we work on that? So circle, right? 
yeah in chat i had written okay. like uh, yeah take any yeah. point so what's your idea so you just take one point and draw a circle around it yeah so what distance will you take that i, I don't know right minimum, now minimum minimum yeah. delta or delta right yeah it should be yeah i mean i am just converting it into a divided compass thing but uh, let's try no, i am not following their uh, strategy to solve their problem okay. but okay uh, but, but i okay yeah so how do you take the radius of the circles yeah that i am thinking and is guessing right now but i am just work on that and just okay. applying that logic that we if we can uh, get a better result than n log n then it will be helpful i think yeah i think you should use some dynamic programming in this method but i don't so we will see later in the course we will surely come back to your idea on this problem okay sure sir so when i teach dynamic programming we will come back okay okay thank you Okay, let's stop the meeting now. There are no more questions. Finding points in the neighboring square will itself be the go of n. Why? as we will have to compare distances with every point no for each point you are just checking for constant many other points right and uh, inside the square you can check whether there is a point right so just take check for their x coordinate just check for their y coordinate and it's a simple compass But we don't know beforehand which points are in neighboring squares to a particular point. Okay. No, but you have already sorted these points, right? n log n in n log n time and uh, what we want to say is that uh, depending on their position in the sorting you can check for these squares whether there is a point in some square.
So you get the idea. What we did was we sorted the points according to their y quality. Okay. Each square has some bound on uh, the y coordinates. And yeah, exactly. Okay, let's stop for today. Continue.